Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Talk With The Titans live from London, UK, all the way to the US of A and worldwide. I'm your host, Callum Elm. This is Talk With The Titans. On tonight's show, I've got my brother Gabs. Hey, Gabs, what are you saying, King? Peace, peace, peace. Say hello to the family real quickly. Peace, oh. peace, peace. What's happening? What's happening? Oh, man. I think they're ready, you know. They're ready for another dose of medicine. Let's yeah. get it in. Let's get it in. So you know what, yeah, yesterday after the show, I know you was having some great conversations um, with our Somali Muslim uh, brother Ahmed, as well as some other Muslims from America and over here in the UK as well, as well as, um, you know, some Kemetic brothers as well. So let me, let me know some, you know, a bit of the conversations you was having yesterday was it kind of inspired this particular show today. All right, all right. Now, uh, basically, yeah, obviously yesterday was a good show. Last night was a good show. Um, obviously, uh, me and a few of the brothers, you know, um, we had three Muslim brothers and uh, two other brothers who I think was, I think they was on the Kemetic, the Kemetic way. Just getting into a nice little dialogue. Um, oh, sorry, as well, one of, one of the Kemetic sisters was there as well. But we were just getting into dialogue, you know. So some of the dialogue took us to, you know, uh, the creation of man. You know, where did the spirit come from? Um, is the spirit that's in man from God. Um, also, we went to, you know, the whole creation. Do you know what I mean? Just dealing it from the Quran aspect through the Christian aspect and obviously the Khmer aspect. So, you know what I mean? It was it was very, very interesting. I'm not going to lie. It was very interesting. Some of the things that I heard were outrageous, you know? Me personally. Me personally, I think it was outrageous. Um, but it was, a good, it was a good dialogue, you know? All the brothers was peaceful and respectful. And um, yeah, man, this is what kind of prompted today's show, you know? I so hear. I hear that, King. I hear that. Everybody who's tuning in right now, please, like, as soon as you tune in, man, give us a big thumbs up. We love to see you lot here, but we need to see some interaction. We love to know that, you know, do we have people in here that actually support Titans TV or are you just here for the sake of being here? So please give us a big thumbs up. Let us know that you're here to support us. You're here because you love the information, regardless if you agree with it or not. I know we say some real controversial things, but we, we, we have to do it, man. We have to do it. Unfortunately, this is what it's all about for those people who don't like this type of stuff. We like provoking your minds to think think outside of the box, to actually critique your own self and to critique others as well. So if you've got any critiques for us, please drop them down below in the comment section. I'm reading them right now. Salutes, salute to my brother content over everything. Oh man. Listen, we just literally released the very first episode of, um, you know, of my particular uh, sincere and specific. So please go check out my brother content over everything um, and see what's going on there because it's absolutely great stuff. Like, trust me, it's, it's, it's peeking, peeking and picking and picking into the brains of myself, into my mind, into the mind of Callum. How does he think? How does he define himself? And so forth and so forth. So please go check that out, um, definitely. Um, so today, 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 family, yeah, we're actually going to be touching on the fourth uh, part of the Kemetic Creed. Uh, the fourth part of the Kemetic Creed is to do with ancestry. Um, ancestry, which I like to term in a scientific term, which is anthropology or the study of humans or study of mankind. That's what we're going to be delving into today. Of course, for those of you guys who know about it, we've released a Kemetic Creed video about uh, two weeks ago when we named the seven elements of the Kemetic, Kemetic Creed, which number one is Gnosis. Uh, theology, number two. Number three is cosmogony. Number four, ancestry. Number five, pedagogy. Number six is ethics. Number seven is eschatology. I'm not going to break down every single one of them right now, but yesterday's video, uh, we did a video on Gnosis. I think it was called, Are You Dumb? Or uh, You're Going to Learn Today? Well, you're going to learn today, basically. That's what that video is, so please go check out that video yesterday, it breaks down the Gnosis, it breaks down the knowledge, it breaks down uh, the educational type system that we have in Kemet uh, in reference to knowing thyself, knowing the universe, and knowing the God or gods. So that was perfect. So please go check out that video. Today, 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 ancestry. We're going to go in through, the, through the anthropology, the ontology of how human beings came down into the form that we know them today, based upon the mythos, not based upon science today. We're going to go based upon our mythos, okay? So we're going to delve into that today. Um, let me see what's saying, what you lot are saying in the comment section. Shout outs to Ali R. Um, shout outs to my sister Tiana Honey Pharaoh. Peace to you, Queen. 
Um, peace also to Isaac, not Ishmael. Uh, shalom, shalom, shalom aleichem. I love it. I love seeing my Hebrew brothers standing up. So Kwame Asharala all day long. I shout you guys out actually in my content over everything video. That's what I'm saying. I love my family, man. Trust me. Um, and we've also got Pentecostal uh, ministries here. What's good? Um, <laughs> yeah, fam. They men asking, did I do demonic hand signs um in the beginning? Well, go on. Yeah, I did. I did. I did. I did a demonic hand sign. <laughs> Sue me. No, I'm playing with you. Um, but no, actually no. Let's do that, man. Let's 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 roll with that. Let's roll with some Illuminati uh type tendency. Let's roll with that Jay Z type tendencies where we throw up a couple of signs and make you guys think like what's going on, what's happening there. But um, uh, enough of all of that. Let's let's go. Let's go in. Let's go in. Um. Let's go in. So my brother's in from Amsterdam as well. So peace to the family. So let's get into this right now. Let's get into this. So my brother, like, um, you know, I know we're going to be going through a lot of things today and we haven't got much time. We've only got like half an hour to 45 minutes tops to, to delve into all these things. So I know we want to talk about man and his creation. Okay. Or how yeah. man was created. And then we also want to go into, um, you know, the three uh, different religions and how their perspective on the, um, on their ancestry, the first man, Adam, and so forth. So we're going to delve into that, and we're going to find out whether, um, you know, the spirit that was breathed, breathed or breathed into, breathed, yeah, breathed into man was the spirit of God, okay? And what does that make us? If we have the spirit of God within inside of us, what exactly does that make us, okay? Consider we're everything. All right, cool. Uh, what does that make us? So we're going to go into that. We're also going to go into, um, you know, the, the, the comedic, um, creation story of man because we all know that it's the archetype according to biblical scholars and Jewish scholars um, they all tell you that you know what the archetype the prototype for the Genesis story is actually coming from Kemet itself so I'm not saying it don't blame me don't blame the messenger that's simply quoting what other um, academic scholars are saying like if you've got a problem Blame your Allah, blame your Yahweh, blame your God, and blame your teachers for not teaching you correctly that Moses was well learned in all of the ways of the Egyptians, and you're now coming across this information like, whoa, 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 what are you trying to say here? So um, let's get into this now. Let's get into this one, Robert. So, um, you know, talk to me, King. Talk to me. I know you wanted to drop some knowledge, so let me know. Yeah, what I was going to say, yeah, I'm not even going to lie. What I wanted to say was, um, um, I wanted to see, yeah, if anybody from the chat, because remember, we needed some... I wanted some uh, a Muslim, a Christian, and a Jew to take part in, um, obviously, and 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 basically discuss their creation story, so that everybody can understand. Because I don't want us to, I don't want people to feel that we're being biased, like we're we're telling their story and that stuff. You know what I mean? I wanted to get from their perspective on what they get on, you know, the whole uh, breathing um, the spirit into the man. Do, do you see what I'm saying? And how and how they view this can get um. Uh, a, a good overview on um, how the different religions see that that um, that saga. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I hear you. I hear you, King. I hear you. Um, this is what I'm going to say. Then this is what I'm going to say. And this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I am going to drop the link. With that saga. I'm going to drop the link with inside of the chat section. Okay, I'm going to drop the link with inside this chat section and see. Um, yeah, see if I can get people involved with the conversation. So if you would like to actually have the link, let me know. Um, usually I'm going to post it on Facebook, but today, please, no um, uh, wayward individuals, please. I really don't have time for that. So please um, be mindful that I'm actually dropping this live right now uh, to the family. Um, so you can join in right now. Okay. That's, that's the link right there. Um, it's in there. So if you're a Christian, a Jew, a Muslim, and you'd like to actually dis explain your creation story, um, let's get it. Let's get involved. If you'd like to have come on and have a talk with us, let's get it on. All right. But King, um, you know, whilst we're waiting for that, um, let's get it. Let's get it in, man. I know you wanted to just jump on to um, your perception of the fact of the Genesis creation story. So I don't know. I can start sharing some screens right about now and jump into the Genesis creation story. Um, yeah, please. If you can, please. If you can get, if you can get in that, I can um, um share my point of view from that um, Genesis story, and hopefully by that time people start um, chiming in onto the panel. All right. So you want Genesis um one twenty five to Genesis two seven? Yeah, two and seven. Yeah, two and seven. All right. Cool. 
I'm going there right now, and I'm gonna actually share my screen. Let's hope I can do this. All right, let's get it in. Okay, cool. Uh, my screen is shared right now, so go ahead, King. Hold on a sec, it's still a bit black. Let me just wait. There we go. Um, can you zoom in a bit? Um, I'll try my best. The glasses. If you can't, if you can't, it's cool. I can, I can still see it. Yeah, that's calm. Okay. That's good, that's good, that's good. All right. And um, which version is this so that, you know, our people say, oh, what version are you dealing with? What version are you dealing with there, bro? Um, that there is the uh, King James Version. King James Version. All right, let's go. Go to you, King. Oh, your screen is going a bit small. You see on the, on the share screen, I can see the chat and everything. Okay, sorry about that. All right. So, Genesis 2, verse 7. Um, and it says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed into it, into his nostrils, no, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Okay. So, let's slowly break it down. This is, this is the interpretation that I get from this, um, this particular passage. So, we have God now. At this time, God had molded Adam, which is the first man, out of clay. Do you know what I mean? Made it out of the dust. He molded man. At the point that um, God molded Adam from the dust and, um, and the clay, um, the man Adam, that physical um, shell, should I say, was not alive. Now, God did a particular action, which was breathing in his spirit into the molded man, and then once he did that, um, the man became a living soul. So if you imagine it, if, you, if you're a potter now, imagine you're a potter, you know, potters that make clay. So you've made uh, a human figurine out of clay. Once you've made that, it doesn't, if you were to make one right now, it's not gonna move, it's not aware. It's just clay, that's what it is. But now, if you was to blow, uh, if you was God, and you was to blow now, your energy or your spirit into the clay and the clay became alive yeah and the, and the clay became alive and aware like whoa started looking around it's no longer it's no longer um um still it's alive so so the question i want to know the question i want to ask people the spirit that entered into the man was that god or was that a created spirit from nothing? Because from my point of view, I'm seeing it as that spirit that was blown into the man is God. And then God now has, has lowered himself into the physical shell. And now we are human beings having a, no, we are God having a, a human experience and a physical experience, understanding this physical domain in which we live in. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? So I always use this analogy, and that is, for instance, if I had an empty bottle of water and I went down to the lake, yeah, and I scooped up some of that water and put it into my bottle and close the lid and walk away, is the water that's in my bottle different from the water that's in the lake? And the answer, of course, is no. Okay, then. So then now, if we can understand that, we now have to, um, I now, well, me personally, I use that same analogy with the same thing that was going on with God when he was molded man. Because the clay was not alive. God blew his spirit into the clay, which then made it alive. It became a living soul, like we just read. And now the man was able to be aware and learn all the things and understand that he's a human being. So I still say that that spirit that was in man is God. Now, obviously, I would like for um, any Muslim, uh, Christian, Jew, even atheist, yeah, I would like them to come on and give their perspective if they think what I'm saying is a, is a fallacy, if it's wrong, do you know what I mean? If I'm interpreting it wrong, um, if it doesn't mean that, do you know what I mean? I like to hear their point of view so we can get into a nice little discussion. My brother. That's just me breaking down. I think. I hear you, I hear you. I'm thinking you ain't, you ain't, you ain't finished yet, King. You ain't finished oh, yet. Because you know, right now, you've just broken down from a Jewish slash Christian perspective. 
Um, yeah. And my Muslim brothers, yeah, I, I know they ain't going to take that. I know they ain't mm. going to take that at all. Um, so you may just have to break it down from a, um, a Muslim perspective as well. Okay, share that screen. You got that? There? Have you got that? Have you got that up there? Nah, family. I'm not gonna lie to you. I can't even say I do. Okay, you ain't got that up here. Well, from the from a Muslim perspective, um, if you're going in the Quran, I think I believe it's in the Quran. Yeah, when God when God made um um when God molded Adam, same thing. He even says he breathed in from his own spirit. He breathed his own spirit into um Adam. Yeah, and it became and Adam became alive. The same thing. All right, let me, I mean, I've got it up for you right now. Okay. Yeah, bring it up. Yeah, it'd be good so people can see because I don't want people to think I'm just making up random. All right, cool. Let me get it to a nice point. All right, and it says I mentioned when your Lord said to the angels, "I will create a human being out of clay from an altered black, from an altered black mud," and when I have proportioned him and breathed into him. Um, from my soul, then fall down to him in prostration. So the angels uh, prostrated all of them entirely. Okay. So as you can see right there, you obviously you got the English there. For those of our uh, Muslim brothers that can read the Arabic, you can obviously read it on top there, see if there's any difference or anything. But as we just read, as the brother just read, you just see it. Yeah. It says, uh, when I have um, proportioned him. Yeah. Oh, I think it's gone. Shit, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And when I have proportioned him and breathed into him my soul, then fall down to him in prostration. Now, we can clearly see, we can clearly see, yeah, that this is God, obviously, breathing in his own spirit. He's saying himself, he breathed in from his own his own spirit, yeah, his own soul, and he put that into Adam, into him, into the man, and then told the angels or the jinn or whatever was around to prostrate. Now, the, the first question you got to ask yourself is, why would the angels and the jinn have to prostrate to a, just a mere human being? Could it be because they understood that God had put himself into the man. So regardless of him um, lowering himself into a physical man, the mere fact that it's God's spirit now that's still in that man, they still have to prostrate because that's still God. This is my opinion. If anybody has any queries with it, I don't mind if you join the panel and, and, and share your view. But this is just what I, this is what I can see and, and this is what I can understand. Do you see what I'm saying? Why would they... Was you gonna say something, bro? No, no, go on. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, I was gonna say why would the why would the angels and the jinn have to prostrate to Adam? I know some people would say, "Well, it's out of respect," and da, 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 but we know why. If you think about, it, you know why. If God is putting His Spirit into a man, the Spirit is still the Spirit that's in the man is still God. It's not no created new Spirit. It's God's soul and Spirit which is in the man. You see what I'm saying? So, of course, they're still going to have to show respect to God, even if he has lowered himself into a physical shell. Do you see what I'm saying? And this is what I'm trying to make our, our brothers and sisters understand, because I know there's a lot of Muslims, and I don't really know about the Christians per se, but I know a lot of Muslims have this thing where they say, um, obviously, God is separate from his creation. He's not a part of it. Do you know what I mean? He's separate. We can't. You can never say that God, God is a man. You know what I mean, that's blasphemy. You know what I mean? It wouldn't make no sense. But we understand why. We understand why um, you couldn't accept that because that means you'd have to accept the Trinity. Ah. Mm -hmm. ain't, that, ain't, ain't, ain't that the truth, Kalam? That's the truth, G. That's the truth. That, you're, you're, you're jumping, G. You're jumping real, oh, yeah, exactly. jumping real far, fam. You're going to get yourself exactly. in trouble. Oh, man. Hold on. Yeah. Hold on. We've got my brother just joining us right now. Rich kid. You think you understand why um, you couldn't accept that because that means just just mute them the Trinity. Mute the mute the YouTube ah. down, King. Mute the YouTube down. Let's get it in, family. Please tell me your mic is open right about now. 
And again, family members, if you're out there, please, please, please hit the share button. Hit the share button. Let everybody know that we're live right now and talk with the Titans. Titans TV is going in, family. So please hit the share button. We're about to go in. We're discussing this. We're discussing this. I also want to discuss whether God created man or man created God. I really want to get into this as well. Like This is going to be so powerful. We don't have long because we're just doing a real quick show right about now because we've got things to be doing today. But we thought, let me just, let's, let's just give you a little, let's give you a little something, something. So let's get it in, family. Rich Kid, if you're there, let me know. Other family members, if you would like to join the panel and have a discussion with us here, the link is inside of the chat section, okay? Discuss Simply go, well. go inside the chat section. Right? Man, oh, man, create yeah. God. I really want to get chat this. section. Oh, this is an so chat section. We don't have a lot because we're just doing a real quick yeah. show right about now. All right, my brother. Unfortunately, okay. Rich Kid, let's just I get it. To get involved. But let's get it in, family. Rich Kid, if you're there, let me know. Yeah, yeah, Other yeah, family yeah. members, if you would like yeah. to join the panel and have a discussion with us, yeah? yeah, the link is inside of the. Okay, I don't know what's going on with these things. Let me just make sure it's low, low. Oh, of course. We don't have a lot because we're just doing a real quiz show. Now you need to come up with YouTube. Come up with YouTube. Let's just get it involved. But let's get it in. All right. There we go. I don't know what's wrong with Rich Kid right about now. I've just had to, yeah, log him out. Log him out like that. Sorry about that, Rich Kid, but I don't know. Let me know when you fixed your mic and uh, the issues that's going on there. Um, so yeah, let's get it in, family. Let's get it in. Um, so we, we, we're asking my Hebrews, my Christians, my Muslims, let's get it in, because I want to know what is taking place. And we've got a question in from Rafi. Times TV, what do you believe in? We don't believe in anything. I, I don't know if we've, we've, we've done this already on the Kemetic Creed. We don't have any beliefs, unfortunately, yeah? I know you guys want to fit us into the religious paradigm, but unfortunately, we don't fit into the religious paradigms, and we choose our very best never to have any beliefs, because beliefs infer doubt, and doubt infers ignorance. So we choose not to believe, and we choose to know. It's a simple choice. Simple choice. All right. Um, so let's get in, man. Let's get in. So we're, we're, we're here right now. We're here right now. We've established, well, my brother's established that you know, the creation process that was taking place both in Genesis and both inside of the Quran as well, there was a creation of man. And man was without making first ignorance. So we choose not to believe and we choose to know. It's a simple right. choice. Simple choice. Yeah. All right. Um, so let's get in. Yeah. Let's get in. So we're, we're here right now. We're here right now. We've established. I don't know why you're still going on. You know the creation process that was taking place I both in that. Genesis and in the Quran as well. There was a creation of. I might have to kick you out, King. I'm, I apologize. I know you are a Titan, but like I don't know what's going on with your thing. Like you just need to mute your YouTube or come off YouTube, and because you're here with us right now, no need to be on the YouTube. All right. Um, so let's get in, man. Let's get in. So what are you saying then, Gabs? Gabs, talk to me. Yeah, um, you know, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm just waiting. You know, I'm waiting for some. Um, I thought some Muslim brothers and sisters was gonna come in, or some of our Christian brothers and sisters, or our Hebrew and our Jewish brothers and sisters to come in and just on this whole creation thing because I don't want them, I don't want people to just see that or just feel that we're just the one that's just giving out this info or just attacking it and. And uh, misrepresenting um, um, their belief systems, you know what I mean? I would like it for them to come in, or even if they don't come in the chat, even if they don't come into the um, the panel, at least leave some questions in the chat so we can have a nice little dialogue. So just even if you're going to type and put down your perspective on that whole um, um, God breathing into Adam, and whether that being God's spirit, which is now in Adam, would that make Adam God? Do you know what I mean? That's all, that's all I want to know. So um, if there's anyone out there that's listening, any other brothers and sisters that want to chime in, please throw your questions out or join the panel so we can we can get this dialogue in. All right. I think, I think, I think people are just kind of, they're running scared right about now. I think they're running scared right about now. So I know you was having some great conversations um, with my brother. As I said, Ahmed yesterday and a few other Muslims yesterday, which was like, I, I was there. I was there till about three o'clock, four o'clock in the morning um, and so forth. So it was, it sounded like it was a good conversation. Um, 
So now it says here, I'm going to go through the comment sections. Shalom, shalom, my brothers. What's good? Um, let me just read some of your questions out. Uh, let's go, let's go, let's go. It says here, all Muslims do is attack Christianity. All right, no, there was a question before that. Where was it? Um, that was it. As for creation, how did man get here? Okay, so that's the question there. How did man get here? There's another question here. Uh, Times TV, you believe God exists? No, I don't. I really don't. I've just told you we don't believe. And I don't believe. So you're still asking me questions based upon belief. So no, I don't. All right? Um, okay, how do you know if you have the right translation of the Quran? Um, well, we can read the Quran in its Arabic language as well. So that's how we know. Um, if Adam was made from black mud, is he created black? Hmm, that's a very good question. Um, that's a very good question. And I think, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, King, no problem. Um, I think we also know the answer to that. And um, we'll keep quiet and see what the Muslims have to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> they're going in here in, in the comment section. You know, I'm loving this, actually. Um, they're going in, yeah, because I can't really see. So, yeah, they're going in, man. They're going in. They make it. They, they're going in. They're going in. I'm loving that anyway. I'm, they're going in. So, um, you know, so I, I, I like what um, you know, the Bible is saying. The Bible tells us that you know, man is created in and after the image and likeness of um, God or Yahweh, um, Elohim, and so forth. Um, I, you know, since there's nobody going in right now, I want to know, like, um, you know, in the comedic understanding, is there a similar concept taking place? Is there a similar concept taking place? And I'm actually going to pull up some stories or some um, from the comedic literature as well. Um, so let me pull up from the comedic literature right quickly. So let me get into this. So um, right here, we have uh, a very much so a similar story taking place with inside of the comedic literature. It says here, um, this is talking about the Ra, uh, indices and instructions of uh, Mary Kare. It says here, um, let me just make sure, yeah, instructions of Mary Kare. It says here, um, he made the breath for their noses to live. They are his images who came from his body. He shines in the sky for their sake. He made for them plants and cattle, fowl and fish to feed them. He slew his foes, reduced his children. So as we can clearly see here, um, you know, our uh, deity concept in Kemet or ancient Egypt uh, states that Ra himself was actually uh, the giver of the breath of life into the nostrils of mankind. So he breathed the breath of life into mankind, according to the Kemetic literature. And he also states that they are also after the images okay so they're also after the image of um, ra himself as well and it says oh. here came from his body so issued out from his essence as well so therefore we have the uh, image and likeness as well with inside of the comedic literature which is quite interesting are you there did you want to say something all right and then we can oh. go over as well into the hermetica hermetica which is uh uh, the Hermetic literature by Jehuti as well. It says here, um, mind father of all gives birth to a primal human. It says here, but mind the father of all who is life and light, okay, gave birth to a human being like himself. There we go again with the likeness. And he loved him as his own child, for he was very beautiful, bearing the likeness. Okay, there you go with the image again of his father. And God was very pleased with his own beauty in the primal person and delivered to him all that he had created. And the primal person took station in the highest sphere of heaven and observed the things made by its author. His brother, the Demiurge, who ruled over the region of fire, which is Ra, the sun. Now that the human had seen those things made in fire, he wished to create things of his own, and his father permitted him to do so. And since the rulers, which are the Malaika, or the angelic beings, or the spheres, or the planets, loved him too, each gave him a share of his own nature. When the human learned the characteristics, he wished to break through the bounding orbits of the rulers and to share the powers of him who rules over fire. So again, uh, we can clearly see that we have the same attributes taking place with inside of the comedic literature, um, where uh, humankind was actually made in and after the image and the likeness of uh, the Most High, which we, we defer to call him Ra. Okay, and uh, we see that the same thing is taking place. 
But what's very interesting to note as well, um, with inside of the comedic literature is actually the first literature recorded in history to discuss the uh, filial relationship with man and God, and also the um, imagery or the image and the likeness of God with man as well. So we can see where the rest of these, according to um, you know other scholars within inside of academia, Egyptologists, and also um, you know biblical scholars, state that these themes were actually borrowed or had its uh, origins within inside of the comedic stories and then trickled down within inside of the Genesis stories. And we also know that these Genesis stories is now being occupied and uh, held up in high regard and respect from the uh, Islamic perspective as well. So we can see how it's traveled throughout the Judeo-Christian and Islamic religions itself. And yet Kemet, according to you know, chronology was the first one who originated uh, these particular style of um, of creation of humankind. Um, do you want to say anything on that, my brother? No, nah, man, that was a that was a nice breakdown that you did there. Um, a very good breakdown, and obviously, I wanted to highlight as well that um, uh, another point which you explained is that yeah, you can see the similarities between um, the same stories. You know what I mean, Ra. Ra breathing into the nostrils of man, um, creating man from his own image. Do you see what I'm saying? So, and Ra not being separate from his creation. Because you know what? This is the only, this is the only main point that I would say that separates us from, uh, I, I, would, I would more say probably the Muslims. I don't know about the Christians and the Jews, but I know, because I know the Muslims, because we, we do a lot of talk with the Muslims and stuff. They, they tell us that, yeah, um, Allah is definitely separate from his creation. He's not a part of his creation at all. You know what I mean? He's in a, he's in a different, he's in a different um, space um, to his creation. So um, I still wanted to just, I still, uh, I, want, I, want, I want our Muslim brothers and sisters and our Christians and our religious, I want them to, I want them to get involved. Let us know if this, is this information right? What do they think? Like, okay, do, Okay, to, to our religious people out there that's in their religion or in faith, yeah? Um, what I was saying or what I was explaining about the spirit being God and now God being inside Adam, which would then make Adam obviously God in, uh, human, um, in human flesh. Do you agree or do you not agree? And if you don't agree, please can you share your reasons why? And then we can, um, we can have a nice, a nice dialogue, uh, dialogue and um, convo about it. So that's that's I'm posting that question out to anyone in the chat room who's um, from any of the free religions or if you're an atheist, anyone. If you agree with what I'm saying or you don't agree, and um, give your reasons why. See, I don't know why they're going. You know, it's always funny. Yeah, um, everybody goes kind of quiet whilst we're actually um, live on air. Well, if in the comment section, they always have a lot to say. So I don't know what's going on, you know. Sometimes I wonder. I actually wonder. Okay, so we have somebody here, Islam Bolton. Um, Islam Bolton, I'm going to, again, post the link within inside of the, of, the, um, of the chat section. You're talking about you want to debate, um, you know, us as Speaker's Corner and so forth and so forth. And, uh, you know, all this hot talk. We've posted the link. Why don't you come on right now and talk to us? Come on. Come on, come on, come on, talk in it. Like, come on, come on, come on. We don't bite. So come on, come on, talk. Um, what is this here? Why is God then saying we many times in the Quran? Hoo wee. Why do you think that actually, Gaps? Why do you think that? Why in the Quran? Um, who's this? We've got uh, D Red, Peace King. Um, someone just asked, why does it say we in the Quran so many times? Your mic is muted, though, if you're trying to talk. Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you say, why does it say we in the Quran? Yeah. Do you know what? Um, I don't know, you know. I haven't really dwelled into that. So I'm not even going to lie and try and answer that question. I don't oh. really know. Okay. Um, actually, you know, now I'm, I'm going to answer it from a Jewish perspective. So we have, um, I wish, I actually, I have got the book here, but 
to find it and pull it up uh, and not allow the conversation to free flow normally and naturally is going to be a shame. So I'm just going to talk, to, talk around the point. So we have a, uh, Abraham S. Yehoda uh, writing, I think in the turn of the 20th century, uh, discusses its, its correlation, uh, the word nature and its correlation to the word Elohim. Okay, so both Elohim and Neche or Necheru are both plural. Okay, so the, you have the word Elohim, which defines or speaks about the deity. It meant to, it, it's major, majority of the time it's translated as God, it's translated as God. But they fully understand that there is actually a uh, plural, there is a plurality within the term Elohim. Okay, and within the term Elohim, there is a plurality. And they was always wondering, why is there a plurality in Elohim? They also asked the same question for the term uh, Shamaim. Okay, if you go into um, you know, the other Semitic languages, there is no word for Shemaim. Okay, it's always called Samawati, Shem, Shemai, and so forth, meaning the sky or the skies, basically. It, yeah, the sky, basically. But they've always wondered, why is there a jewel, okay, Shamaim, inside of the, um, of the Bible itself? Why is it only in the Hebrew language there is a duel taking place? And then this uh, author, Abraham S. Yehoda, proposes that basically that the, this is just the Egyptianness of the, um, of the actual Hebrew people. The Hebrew people took on the conceptualizations of the ancient Egyptians. So the ancient Egyptians had uh, the, the, the dua. They had two skies, basically. They have the nut which is the skies that we see in the day, and they have the dua, which is the skies beneath the ground, basically, or on the other side of the earth, basically. So that's why they had the term uh, shamayim in terms of the Hebrew language itself. Also, in terms of the language of God as well, Elohim, with inside of the Kemetic literature, there is the necheru, okay? Necheru is actually a plural terminology, a plural terminology that signifies the one, basically. The plural that signifies the one. So that's where the Elohim comes from, all right? Where is the plurality? So now, if we transpose that with inside of the Quranic context, and we see that a lot of times you're talking about the we, the we, the we, the we, the we, it's really talking about the, um, and I would say this as, no, let me humble myself. Let me humble myself and simply say this. This is a theory, okay? This is a theory, because I know you're going to be shouting us down and so forth. I'm not telling you to choose to accept it. I'm going to put it to you as it's a theory, okay? Don't accept it. Your Allah is one and so forth. Yeah, yeah, we know about your theology and so forth. Whatever. I've heard you. I'm with you. I'm just telling you there is another theory that's been proposed that this could correlate in some of the Quran where the we is actually talking about the multiplicity of beings that makes up the one that you would signify as Ra or Allah or Elohim or Elo or Yahweh or so forth. Some may classify them as being the Malaika or the angelic beings. It's been referred to as the we, okay? It's been referred to as the we. But when Allah is the one, the one Allah is talking, the most high Allah is talking, and it, then it now turns back into the I. Um, so that is the theory that's being proposed. Um, don't shoot the messenger because I said it, all right? I'm just saying it. Anyways, um, let me just get my brother D-Red in. D-Red, come true, King. All right, D-Red, let me know if you're hit, fam. Let me know if you're hit. <clears throat> yeah, what it do, man? I'm here, man. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm just, I'm just listening to you, trying to get caught up to what y'all talk, caught the speed of what y'all talking about right now. But uh, it seems like y'all talking about the plurality of, of God, so to speak. Just, just real, just, just real. I mean, oh, uh, I think a lot of times, especially when you read uh, some of these scriptures, when they say we, we don't understand that uh, a lot of the times uh, the scriptures were written in a. Uh, we we talking about the, the the Hebrew Bible it was written in a henotheistic uh, framework. It wasn't about uh, the whole concept, the concept that people say that the Bible was monotheistic. It wasn't monotheistic. All you got to do is go read when he talks about when when uh, Moses when he's talking to Jethro after they came out of uh, out of Egypt. He said hey, Jethro says now I know that uh, Yah is the, the the most high God. So I mean it was never a situation where in the Bible, that the Bible was just a monotheistic thing. That's, a, that's something that 
uh, most Christians will propagate or Catholics will propagate, but most people that 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 actually get off into the scriptures to tell you that the Bible was never monotheistic. They just they were henotheistic. They they believed that uh, Yahuwah was the Most High God. You see what I'm saying? He was not. Uh, he was above all other gods or, or deities or principalities or powers uh, that was around at the time. So that's true. I love that. I love that. So I'm talking about. So again, if anybody else would like to join the conversation, um, come and get in. Like, come and get in with us. The link has been posted so many times with inside of the comment section. Uh, we don't even have much time left. Okay, literally, Gabs, you still gotta go in the next ten minutes. Yeah, yeah, I gotta go, but um. I just wanted to say, man, um, that that Islam Bolton guy, he's been doing a lot of he's been doing a lot of finger typing, but he's not coming into the chat. I don't understand. He's been saying a lot of stuff there, but he's not coming into the chat. Come come into the chat, bro. Come and speak. And I, I think there's another. I think there's a Hebrew. I think there's a Hebrew brother there that's talking as well. Just come into the chat. You know what I mean? Let's 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 hear let's hear your views. Let's hear your dialogue. And like, it feels like we've moved away from the question I asked. And going into this whole we thing, but no one ain't dealing with, with the question Is the spirit that God breathed in to Adam, is that God or is it not? Do you know what I mean? I just wanna I just wanna hear people's uh, views and um and see what, what scriptures they use to validate that it's not or what it means to them. That's all. Do you know what I mean? So Islam Bolton, please, bro. Yeah, come join in. Throw throw it in one more time, bro, please. All right, you know what, yeah? We've got a perfect opportunity right now. We have got um, uh, one of the fathers of, actually not one of the fathers, yeah, one of the fathers of these uh, religions, of Christianity and Islam. We've actually got my Jewish brother who is here right now. So we've got my brother Masun in the building. Shalom, shalom aleichem to you, King. I want to know, I want to know my brother, um, was this spirit that, that was breathed, breathed into a uh, man, Adam, okay, in Genesis 2-7. Um, is that the spirit of the Most High, or is that godly spirit? Is that a God spirit with inside of mankind? Uh, okay, all right, cool. So uh, we're gonna, I'm going to give you some time to, um, you know, pull up. I can see he's got a tour right there. He's going to pull it up. So we're going to get into this. We're going to get into this from, um, you know, a Jewish perspective. And let's see what we can, we can, um, we can divulge ourselves into today. Oh man. So again, let me actually do something which is kind of cool. Can I do it? Nah, no. See, every time I want to do something, it's, it's, it's the camera's on me. So what I'd love for you guys to do right now is to please hit the like button. Hit the like button right now. Give us some thumbs up. For those of you guys who are new to the show and haven't already subscribed, please hit the subscribe button, man. Subscribe right now. We have loads of shows like this every single week. All right? All day long, man. these types of shows. Um, and if you haven't subscribed and you don't know much about Talk of the Titans, uh, Talk of the Titans was birthed out the idea that the intellectual giants that the titans of our community should have a well-organized platform to present, discuss, and debate critical information affecting our community proposed by you, our audience members, our community. So, that being said, all right, we've been discussing this. This question has been proposed, like to do with man, the essence of man. Um, does he have God's spirit inside of him? Does that make him holy? Does he have the Shekhinah? Does he have the Shekhinah inside of him? Does he have the Ruh inside of him? Do this, does he have the Kudesh uh, Ruh inside of him? So let's get into this. Let's get into this. Um, my brother Nosun, please unmute your mic and let us know. Okay, hello, can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, great. So let's talk about first um, the plural and the singular um, aspect of it. So of, of, of God, right. So um, the way I was taught in, in Hasidus is that, um, so Elohim, Ele we don't say God with an H because we're not supposed to say God's name. So we say Elohim, but it, you, you pronounced it right. Anyway, <coughs> so, and the reason why Elohim is is plural is because um, when God manifests manifests Himself on a lower levels, when it's connected to the world, it's plural because as a like He has these different um, um, like Chesed, Gavura, Teferis, these different em em emanations that come that come from Him, and that's plural. Um, as I don't know if you know, but um, I'm I'm also very interested in philosophy and science. If you if you take um, for example colors. 
right, and the uh, uh, um, this, um, light and the way it splits up into colors, is light one color uh, white? The answer is yeah, it's just one color. But when it splits up into a prism, it becomes multiple colors. So really, <coughs> the difference between plural and single is actually relative. Um, only when we're down here on this planet, we say, okay, this is single, this is plural. But actually, dividing things as uh, single and plural uh, ultimately is not a real is not a is is not a real thing. Um, so that's why there's not really this contradiction. Well, is God? Well, it's not really a contradiction on a deeper level. Um, so I wanted to point that out. And um, yeah, that's 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 basically it. That that was my main point. Um, you, you you spoke a little bit about Shechina and Kedusha and those kind of things. Um, yeah, that was that was interesting. I I think that um, um, like kedusha, which means holiness, is more to do. I guess it's more to do with people's uh, purity, um, how pure they are, how connected they are to God in that sense of being pure. Um, yeah, that's I I just comment that. Does that does that make sense? That makes perfect sense. That makes perfect sense. But I wanted to know now, so in the creation of man, okay, I love that. I love the way you broke down, um, you know, the plurality, the singularity. I love that. But I want to know now to do with man itself, okay? When, um, you know, Yahuwah breathed in, okay, the breath of life, or Elohim breathed in the breath of life into man, uh, was that a divine, uh, was that from his own spirit, his own soul, uh, and, and proportion it out into man? Uh, yeah, as far as I understand, yes, it's from, it's, yes, the answer is yes, it's direct part of God. Uh, it says, it says, um, a part of God, literally. So that's the answer. In according wow. to this, the answer is yes. Wow. Well, are you saying to me that we are divine having a physical experience? Well, it definitely feels like that. But yeah, the answer is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Wow. This is amazing. This is from the mouth of my Jewish brother himself. So I don't know. I don't know how. I don't know how we're gonna go on with this. Like, I don't know. I don't know. Muslims, okay? The Jews are agreeing with my brother Gabs right about now. They're agreeing with the Kemetic uh, teachings right about now. So I want to know, okay? If you yourself hold um, Musa, alayhi salam, in such high regard, and his teachings in such high regard. Why do you have so much, um, you know, strife and problems with this particular saying of ours? I would like to know. Please, 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 please let us know in the comment section. Otherwise, join the conversation. Join the conversation. I've got my brother, brother Ali R saying, we are all gods. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Um, please go and check out content over everything let me do this man let me do a shameless plug for my brothers right now if i possibly can um let me share my screen let me actually share my screen um because i would love to get you guys involved with the conversation go and uh, subscribe to his channel as well um so you can see right here okay you got callum times tv um right here so please go and check it out Go and check it out. It's a very um, interesting um, dialogue that's been uh, taking place over here. Callum Times TV. Uh, what defines Callum? Okay, it's right here. And I don't like this. You know, there's 33 likes. I mean, dislikes here. Come on, and 35 likes. Come on, family. I want to see some more of my supporters. More of my supporters here, yeah? because we all know who's doing the dislikes right about now. The majority of them, if not all of them, are most probably the Muslims. Okay. So if you can, if you can, go over there, support the thing. Um, subscribe to um, uh, content over everything and also hit the like button watch the video leave your comments let me know what you're thinking let content over everything know what you're thinking as well um, so what are you saying we've got hilarious in the building we've got Kumba in the building so let's get in we're gonna go in from a Christian perspective as well so Kumba and hilarious are you ready to get in yeah man I'm ready I'm actually, coming to, I'm actually coming speakers corner next week you know all right that's perfect that's perfect we'll see you there so hilarious i want to know okay are you um you know when in that genesis story there okay is you know allah's or oh, sorry yahoah elohim spirit dwelling with man um yes he's dwelling in every man convicting men of sins 
Okay. So you, are you saying that you are a part of God? Um, I made I made in His image, but I am not a part of Him in the sense that um, um, I am in Him, but I would say He He is in me. Okay, if that makes sense. He is in you. I like that. I like that. All right, all right, all right. I hear that. Um, same question over to you, Kumba. Oh yeah, most definitely. Um, <clears throat> he's within. He's within all of us for sure. Ooh, okay. This is this is interesting. Okay, so. You know, um, you know, my Jews and my Christians, they, they're all on this. They're all on this. Um, I guess it's just the Muslims. I guess it's just the Muslims. Uh, I don't want to speak negatively about me, my Muslims. I just want to know, like, what, what is it? What is the separation going on? What's the separation psychology, as my brother Sarah would say? Is there a separation psychology going on with inside of Islam? Why do you separate yourself from Allah? I just, uh, help us. Help us to know. Help us to know, family. I really want you to actually get involved with this conversation. But it looks like you guys are not going to get involved with this conversation. So um, never mind. Bigger Valley. Bigger Valley. I see you, King. I see you. Wow. Wow. I, I see you, family. So you know what? My brother, Gabs, I don't know what more we can say on this. I don't know what more we can say. I know. I know. I know. Show. And it looks can like I come in for a second? Thank you. Can I come in for a second? Oh yeah, please do. Oh, yeah, please do. Okay, I just wanted to comment. I think there's two ways of, of looking at God. There's God as in goodness and God as in existence, right? So when you're talking about the guide in your life, Father, all that kind of thing, that's how you're relating to God as in goodness. And that is God is inside of you, right? Everybody wants to do good. Everybody's got a part of them that wants to do good. But when you're talking about God as existence, yeah, then you are a part of God, right? There's nothing that exists that is outside of God. Only God exists. So when it comes to existence, there is only God. So I just want to point that out in according to uh, Hasidic philosophy. That's real. That's real. That's real talks. Um, my brother, Gabs, please. Jump on quickly. Jump on quickly. Oh. Gabs, are you there? Yeah, well, can you hear me? I oh, I thought you said mute the mic. But, but boy, brother, like, wow, you know, I thought today we was going to be dishing out some medicine, but, you know, it looks like, you know, some people have been coming down to our A&E service, you know, getting their daily checkups. Do you know what I mean? I'm, 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 I'm surprised, you know? Jeez, so the Christians and the Jews, there, yeah, okay. I can high five all of you, you know. I'm gonna give you an air high five, bang, right there. What the? But I want to know what are our Muslim brothers and sisters saying about this? Come on, Elon Bolton. Where is Bolton? Someone call Bolton. I want to hear what Bolton has to say. Do you know what I mean? No, nah, but on the real though, um, no, nah, that's good information. Do you know what I mean? Because it's it's clear to see. It's evident. I don't know how someone can separate um, God from creation. But then use the creation to understand God. It doesn't make no sense. It's either God's going to be in the creation uh, for you to understand Him, or He's not. If all this stuff is created from not, if all this stuff is created from nothing, then you uh, you're not really understanding God. You're understanding nothing. Hmm. Do you see what I'm saying? So I'm, I'm I still want to. I, I just want to. I want to hear. I want to hear the Muslims. I want to hear what they have to say about this because this is Can this I is big know? stuff. This is deep. Can I speak as a Muslim today? Please let me speak as a Muslim today. Don't, don't, don't do it, bro. Don't do it, bro. Cause you know they're gonna start to no. Don't do it, bro. Because you know what's gonna happen, fam. Nah, I'm, I'm gonna yeah, go on, do it, do it. I'm gonna have to quote from my Sufi Muslim sources now. So my Sufi Muslim sources. All right, so I'm here, Sufi Muslims. Okay, okay? and it states, um, this is from uh, Rumi, and I'm. I'm even sure it's also from Al Hajjad, um, Halaj as well, you know. It says here, this is what signify, is signified by the words Anna al Haq, okay? I am God. Really and truly, that, pronoun that translation is poor. It actually means I'm the truth. But I'm going to go with it anyway. It says, I am God. People imagine that it is a presumptuous claim, whereas it is really a presumptuous claim to say, Anna al Abid, okay? I'm a slave of God, okay? Okay. So, um, and an al haq I am a God, which again is, I am the truth, is an expression of great humility. The man who says, Ana al-Abid, 
I am a servant of God or slave of God, affirms two existence, his own and God's. But he that says, Ana al haq I am God, has made himself non-existent and has given himself up and says, I am God. That is, I am not, he is all, there is no being but God's. This is the extreme of humility and self-abasement. Um, and this was a commentary on the great expression that was made by, um, uh, what's his name? Mansour al-Halaj. Okay, Mansour al-Halaj uh, was a Sufi. He had a Sufi expression. And unfortunately, he said that he was God, basically. He said he was the hack, the truth. And uh, based upon that, uh, he was actually imprisoned. Um, so this is what happens in the Muslim world, you know. You're actually imprisoned for speaking out uh, things like saying you are God. Uh, he was imprisoned, and then finally he was executed. He was actually uh, lit on fire, and I believe hanged as well. So he was lit on fire. His ashes was uh, spread throughout the lands and so forth. So um, there's other individuals within inside of uh, Islamic thought. Definitely my Sufi brothers, uh, you know, definitely acknowledge the fact that they are God. Um, and, um, but we fully understand the fact that if we actually say these things outside in public, as again, if you go and watch my um, uh, content over everything video, I explain this. I explain this. Some people want to be the abid. Some people want to be the slaves. I'm happy to be called slaves. They're actually, um, they're actually ecstatic to be called the slaves of God uh, and tend not to want to be in and after the likeness and image and to imitate God and to be like God and to be one and know their, their own beings with the essence of God until there's nothing left but God. Okay. Some people don't want to do that. Some people don't want to see the God inside of creation. And some people don't want to see that when I see you, I see the Father. And when I see the Father, you should see, when you see the Father, you should see me. Or when you see me, you should see the Father. Some people don't understand those Sufi type teachings, those Hermetica type teachings, those Kabbalistic type teachings. Some people are in the lesser and dense levels. That's why we don't speak these types of talks to you. And usually these are why these talks are reserved only to be uttered by a mouth to air, mouth to air mouth to ear because these are the ineffable words but anyway i digress i digress um so it seems as though um i wanted i was gonna drop some comedic teachings but again i don't think it's, it's the time and place for it i don't think it's the time of place for it uh, my brother extremely balanced tv says callum is confused um come on come on let me jump let me let you jump on i know you have the ability to come on family come on king come on Come on, let us know why we are uh, confused, especially me. Let me know why I'm confused. Um, so let's get it in. Let's get it in, family. Let's get it in. Bro. Yes, fam. Yo, uh, yeah, I got to shoot now, man. I got to okay. shoot. I got to shoot. Um, I was going to say um, thank you, um, obviously, for the show. This, this, this has been a good show. Um, obviously, we got some answers out from some of our... Um, some of our, our, our Jewish and Christian brothers, um, obviously still waiting on the Muslims, and um, they, they seem to want to stay in the chat and, and not want to come and entertain and, and get into dialogue with us. Maybe we'll do another show again and probably get them in so they can, so we can all hear their view and their, um, their point of view on that whole chapter and that whole, um, the whole spirit of God going into Adam. But um, I'd like to say uh, uh, peace and love to everybody on the panel. Peace, to le peace and love to everybody in the chat. Uh, we love you all. You know what I mean? Um, like, like and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. You know? Peace, 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 brother. Kalam, I'll see you, bro. All right, family tree. I'm going to see you soon, King. Oh, oh yeah, sorry. I want to finish. Oh, yeah. And the word for this year is um, hashtag medicine. You done, know. <laughs> Done no, the done no. Hashtag medicine. Okay, so family, you know what? I'm gonna sign out literally in ten minutes time. Okay, I'm gonna sign out in ten minutes time. But I want to invite my brothers and sisters here who are actually from the from the uh, Jewish slash Israelites uh, school of learning, and also my Christian brothers who are from you know obviously Yeshua Hamashiach or Isa Al Messiah school of learning. So please, brothers, you don't chime in, come in. I'm gonna just. Uh, regulate the uh, comment section so come in you know discuss whatever you like to discuss and let's um you know have a flourishing discussion hi can i clarify something yep go ahead okay so the idea the idea that we're part of god is is i think is very very different to saying that i am god because if you say that i am god it means you're separating yourself from from the infinite god because there's only one true existence right so 
if you say I'm God, you're separating yourself from that one infinite true existence. Um, if you say you're part of God, that's a very different thing than saying I am God, because I um, universally refers to an individual, doesn't refer to we or the whole existence of, you know, every, you know, all of existence. So, I, I mean, we, me as an individual is um, obviously I'm limited. So obviously I'm not God, um, but I have, I'm part of that infinite God. I'm a limited part of that infinite. That's right. That's right. I'm with you, my brother. Um, again, these are diff this, these are definitely um, different, varying levels and degrees of understanding and knowledge. Every single level, uh, once you um, climb up that ladder, so to speak, you realize that it's true. But every truth, um, when we go into the laws of Jehutia again, um, you know, every truth has a polarity to it. So every truth can actually um, not be a hundred percent true. So what I mean by that is when we call ourselves and say that I am God, that's one level. That's one level. That's that's one level right there. Then we have to remove um, certain words from that conversation. We have to start removing the I am God to just being I am. You with me? That's another level of understanding. Then we move away from the I am and then it's just simply the I-ness or the oneness. And then after that, uh, there's another type of conversation where there isn't actually any words at all. You're just melted with inside of the complete oneness of being. And it's just simply silence, which is the highest praise. For those of you lot who own the Hermetica, you will understand the highest form of praise is actually silence or meditation. But that's another type of teaching again. So I don't want to go into too much depth. This is, mystic this is mysticism that we're discussing right now. But yes, my brother Nasun, you are completely right to a degree with what you just said. So I'm in agreement with you. Can I? Oh. All right. Yes. Go ahead, family. Yeah, I would just like to say um, I agree with Nasun as well. Um... As a Christian, I believe that God um, exists in eternity rather than saying... That's what the problem is with saying infinite when you're talking about God is you imply that God has a beginning and that would be contradictory to his nature because infinite starts with zero and then it goes on and on and on. So to say it's he's eternal would be more accurate terminology because we know that God exists in eternity rather than in time and space because he is not bound by time and space. He simply just is self-sustaining and just exists. He um, just um, lives, he just is. So um, to put infinite in that kind of way of describing him would be um, prob problematic. So I think the better way of describing him would be eternal. And when if he is work and when he is in us, working in us, he's working in us from our reality, which is in time and space. So he's moving back and forth from these different um, re reforms or realities. So for example, with um, Yeshua, he came in to our time and space and into our form to to basically um, live amongst us and give us the way of living in our form, the way we are in our finite minds. So yeah, that's how I see it. I'm with you. So God is both transient and eminent. Um, and the best way of describing him is not infinity, it's actually eternal. I'm with you, I'm with you, King, I'm with you. There Again, these are um, varying degrees of actual of actuality and reality. Um, sometimes we have to now climb that ladder. We now have to clear the mist from our eyes to see things more and more clearly, the more and more we define things. That's why usually we utilize um, negative statements. Uh, so we tend not to say what God is, but what God isn't. And I like the way that, how you just broke that down, family. So that was nice. Um, the sun or Kumba, come on, man. We've only got a few more minutes left. So if you want to drop some knowledge, some heat right about now, man, I'm all ears, I'm in learning mo mode. So I want to listen to some knowledge, okay? So I look up to personally, when it comes to biblical stuff, uh, Torah stuff, Islamic stuff, I have to, I have to concede and, and look up to my Jewish brother to be like, teach, teach family, teach. <laughs> so listen, go on King, is there anything else you wanted to say? Okay, not quite. No, I got, sorry, I got nothing to add really. I mean, it, like, it's, it's an open, it's too open, if there's something specific. I mean, I'm not, I wouldn't say I'm tremendously knowledgeable, I know bits and pieces here and there, but um, it's a bit too open to just add something, I don't really know what to add. All right, no problem, no problem. All right, we've got also a Reminder TV has just joined us, so Reminder TV, um, if you've got anything to say, uh, please add your, your two cents. Yeah, um, hello everyone. Um, yeah, I mean, to me, God is, um, you know, um, nothing like his creation. I think uh, God created 
the creation and we are the creation of God. And um, everything we see within the world that we live in, um, in terms of nature, is a uh, is a creation of God. And um, whatever we, man, uh, has invented is only from the tools and us um, um, within this world. And uh, yeah, that's just in short, really. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Again, this is a short show, you know, this is a real short show. I seen a son, do you want it to jump in? Yeah, I just wanted to say, sorry, going back about the infinite. Um, I don't think, I think he was trying to translate infinite as a thing, like it's got a beginning. I think infinite is much better understood in a very, very plain way. Um, which means it's not finite. So anything that is limited, anything that's limited is finite. Infinite just, just means it's not infinite. It doesn't it has no other description. So I think it fits God very well. Um, um, I would I would rather <laughs> say. Oh, Kumba, did you want to comment? Or? Well, yeah, I just uh, I was uh, kind of agree with him. If you like look at the the universal sign, our symbol for infinity. Uh, I think it's two intertwined circles because it's to make that point that, you know, it's a continuous loop, that there is no beginning as um, saying there is no beginning of it. Um, it's just one energy feeding off of another, you know? And so, um, so uh, yeah, infinite would, I don't think there'd be a problem. I don't think there's an inference that there's a beginning when you use the word infinite only in mass. I mean, my my comment to that would be, um, I, I I'm not saying it's it's, a, it's a terrible to use that kind of way of describing God, but I, I feel like we should be careful because um, in, uh, infinite we know by definition in, in, implicates a beginning. It doesn't implicate an ending, but it implicates a beginning, and we know that God has no beginning and no end. He exists. So I was only saying that. When we're talking about God's existence, we should be careful to use the word infinitely based on that definition. If there's another definition for infinite, then maybe you can correct me. But based on the definition which I see, it, see, they tell, it says that it has a beginning. So I just wanted to be sure about that. What definition are you using? Well, it says here that... Um, it says here, yeah, second, the set of non-negative integers, which has a beginning, but no end. No end is infinite. So what it's basically saying is there's no end. So you can go count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, until you get to, there's no end. You just keep going on and on and on and on. But they start, it, starts with it starts with zero. And there's a problem there because then you imply that God has a start. So even if you say yeah. he has, an, even if you say he has an infinite mind, you're saying that his mind starts somewhere. <laughs> no, you're mixing up. You're mixing up. That is a, that is infinite. It's true, but that's not the only infinite. It's obviously infinite, even if it has minus infinity. There's actually infinite numbers of, of infinity. So although it's true that if it starts from zero, it's infinite. It doesn't mean it's the only infinite. So, yeah. Mm. Well, that's that's fine. We can agree to disagree, but. I think for myself, I would rather use the terminology of eternal because it fits more, of, it fits more to his nature being um, ever existent rather than maybe beginning and then existing, which I'm sure you don't believe that that's the case. Yeah, of course. Of course, I don't believe that. Yeah. I, th I, think, I think all the people that I, that I speak to that understand infinite, nobody has that uses that definition. I think you're, you're taking from a dictionary and you're using one of the definitions that people that use the word infinite don't have don't use it in that way so but whatever all right all right family all right you know i actually found something you know i'm gonna just leave with this particular quote because i was happy to find this quote uh, okay so this was i was looking for earlier on actually um so this is coming from um the accuracy of the bible by abraham s yehuda um a nice jewish brother it says here elohim as a name of God, it is only in Egyptian that the plural Necheru, meaning the gods, was commonly and generally used as a collective term. As a rule, the Egyptians never spoke of God in the singular, and when he referred to a definite a divinity, he mentioned it by name, viz, Ptah, Ra, Thoth, Amun, etc. In a general way, way, he used the plural because he had all the gods in mind, or a corporation, head of gods, composing a number of great gods. It is only in later times, not earlier than the 12th century BC, 
that we encounter in literature, in Egyptian literature, the use of theta as a singular for God. Generally, and even this, as a rule, only in popular, popular literature, not in sacred scriptures. Now, the use of Elohim in Hebrew can only be explained as an adaption to the early Egyptian quarrel, Necheru, made during the sojourn of Israel in Egypt under the intensive influence of Egyptian conceptions and Egyptian speech. This plural became then so common that the monotheistic author of the Pentateuch had to retain it and apply it to the one God, emphasizing, as he repeatedly did, and under Elohim, the one God solely and exclusively was to be understood. And this is best evidenced by the fact that all the verbs referring to Elohim are in the singular. It is only in sight, in this light, sorry, that the phrase Yehoah is Elohim, repeatedly recurring in the Pentateuch becomes comprehensible. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll leave it like that. I'll leave it like that. Ooh. Basically show everyone uh, when I was talking about, um, you know, other uh, biblical scholars, especially this one, which is a Jewish scholar, talking about the Elohim actually uh, was an Egyptianized form or coming from Egyptian, in, Egyptian influence of the actual Hebrew people in Egypt, because they obviously will utilize the terminology Necheru, and they was familiar with it with inside of their uh, world view. So they took the plural of Necheru and transposed it into the plural Elohim, but it was always understood as the singular, as the one divine deity. Um, so yeah, I just wanted to make sure I had that in there. I know a lot of you lot might have something to say right now, but God damn, I'm trying to close down the show. So, <laughs> oh, can I... Can I uh, Go on, go on, go on. I know you want to say something, so go ahead, say. Uh, I'll say quickly that um, I understand why they may say that, um, but the problem with that is we imply that the Jews didn't already think of God in plural because Elohim simply means um, it's, it's we. When, when God says, um, let us make man in our own image, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not me, it's not I. So the implicate, so we've already known from Quebec that God is we, we already know that God is more than one because his consciousness and his mind is so complex because the problem with other religions like Islam, they, they, they trap him into being one mind or they trap him um, in, in, into the way they perceive him. But from, from our perspective, from the biblical knowledge, we know that God is far complex and that he has multiple um, ways of functioning within his um, consciousness. So to limit him to say that he is one um, in the sense that his mind is one, um, it's a bit problematic because that's not what we see in the word when he says we, um, you know, let us. So there's implication there. Yeah. Okay, no problem. All right. I just wanted to quickly read out some comments. It says here, the creation is in the creator and the creator is in the creation, totally pervading and permeating all places. Brother Harry Singh breaking down right now. So he's using some, whew, he's going in. It says here, the creation is in the creator and the creator is in the creation, totally pervading and permeating all places places all right uh what's my queen saying so diamond purpose says here the essence of our lord is conscious and awareness that he was all has always existed but the creation of time it was created by the lord and we came into it as man and woman um so real interesting so real interesting real interest, interesting um information that's being dropped um shout out to everybody with inside of the comment section right now i'm trying to have an early night's sleep last night was crazy okay i didn't get to go to bed till like four o'clock in the morning because you you know had me up doing numbers so i'm just gonna try to close down the show right now okay so i'm closing the shop the show right now i'm gonna post up the link look inside of the comment section okay so the link is inside the comment section so of course i'm going to stay here for another half an hour behind the scenes with everybody talking discussing and also we're going to get in we're going to get some heat conversations going on so if you'd like to join please just hit the link down below in the comment section and jump in also please let me know what you thought of the show today what are your comments do you agree do you disagree um do you feel what my my jewish brother is saying are you feeling what my uh christian brother is saying are you saying we said he's saying gavs just just hit the nail on the head and everybody just had to agree what my brother had to say because it was just common sense so let me know your thoughts your feelings on this particular um, topic today also also we've got over like 1900 people here today please hit us up with some big thumbs up give us some likes let us know that you're actually feeding us okay we want to know we want to have some feedback we want to know that we're actually giving you something of value of substance that you can actually uh, sink your teeth in so please give us a thumbs up show your support show your like to times tv and we're going to keep on pushing forward 
Um, so family, I'm going to sign out right now. Peace and love to you all.